Okay, so the first command we're looking at for a Metasploit is going to be help. And that's going to be all of the commands that we get to work with. I'm going to maximize this so you can see there are a lot of commands. The next command is the background command. And if you type background, what happens is it lets us toggle between our Metasploit console and our Met Interpreter session. So to go back, we can just type in session type in I one. Alright, so a big part of that, it's not session, it's sessions. The next command is cat. And that will concatenate a file, let it allow us to read it. But where are we at? Like what directory are we at? So we can actually do an ls and we can see that we are on the desktop of our victim machine. So notice there's no Word document as of yet. So I'm going to go ahead and log into my server. I'm going to put a text document there and we're going to call it test. It is test. This is a test file. And that way it's everything that we've seen from our uh, interpreter shell. If we do another ls, oh, there's our text document. So let's go ahead and read it. So we could do cat test.txt. And that is our content of our file. Next command is going to be our CD. And CD is used for change directory. And next is PWD. And PWD is our present working directory. Next is our clear EV. So let's go ahead and let's log into our server. Let's see what's going on with the uh, event logs. So Windows logs. Let's look at the application logs. So we see that they are there. Let's hop over to our Kali. We can type clear EV. and it tries to wipe the appropriate logs. Next is our download command. And we could download specific files from our server machine to our Kali machine. So to make this a little simple, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my test Word document I'm going to place it on the root of C drive. So it's underneath C drive. In Kali, and I want to download. So let's try it first with just one slash test.txt. And you'll notice that it downloaded my test document. Where did it save it to? Well, let's double check my home directory. And my home directory, there it is. And that is the appropriate file. Next is edit. Okay, so with edit, let's look at our present working directory. Let's see where we're at. So we are at the student desktop. I want to copy my Word document back to my desktop, make sure that it's there. And in Kali, I want to edit, oh, 
test.px. Okay. And it may take a second or two, but we should be able to edit it. And then let's go ahead and oh. let's go ahead and close our terminal. Oh, that closed the terminal completely out. Okay, so I went back, I fixed it, and to actually exit out, it was supposed to be escape. Alright, so escape puts a colon down here, and you should be doing colon Q. It'll actually ask if you want to save it. I want to... Okay, so it was colon Q explanation mark. So let's try that one more time. We want to edit it. Now we want to go ahead and quit. So escape colon Q and let's see if S will save it. I did not like that. So colon Q exclamation mark and that exits it. Okay, but with just doing Q and exclamation mark, it doesn't actually save it. So what we have to do is I had insert to actually be able to type in here, but you can edit it. And once you edit it, tap escape colon gives us the colon at the bottom, W for write or save, Q for quit. And that will allow us to save it. So edit was a little bit of trouble, but we're getting through it. Okay, so if we want to execute a command, we can actually type execute. Oh, I hope I spell it right execute and what command do we want to do so in this I want to go ahead I want to do the command prompt so I'm going to do hyphen s cmd dot exe hyphen i hyphen capital H f should be for a standard exe I should interact with the process after creating it, and hyphen H creates the process hidden from view. So this will should open up a command prompt. And it did. Exit to exit our command prompt, and there we are. Next is the get UID. That will show the current user ID. We could get PID, that will show us specific processor IDs, or get SID, and that will show us the SID for this particular computer. Another good one is hash dump. And what we can do with hash dump is run post, because the post module will dump the content of the SAMS database. So post Windows gather hash dump. If we had access to the system user, it should yield us the appropriate uh, SAMS database. But because, again, we're doing this against the server 2008 and our user does not have uh, elevated privileges, we can't view all uh, hashes. 
Next is our idle time. And I will show you how long the user has been idle. Next is ipconfig. And that should show you the appropriate uh, IP information for our target machine. Okay, so next is our local present working directory and our local change directory. So we'll do lpwd. That will show us our local working directory. And lcd will show us our local usage directory. Another common command is ls. That's like a directory. Next is our migrate command. And how we use migrate is we run post windows manage migrate. And that should allow us to migrate to another process on the victim machine. So our process ID should change. So now let's verify that. We can do that with a PS, and that will show us a list of all processes running. And our new process was 2424. And there we are. OK, next we have uh, more of a scripting option, which is going to be resource. So if we just type resource, run it, nothing happens. But resource will allow us to do a line by line script. All right, so what I want to do is I want to go ahead, I want to create a script on my computer, on the root of my computer. So I actually want to create a new Word document here. So to do that, I'm going to go user application, accessories. Let's do it with VPad. What I want to do is I want to have this do ls do get uid get sid and then background. I want to save it as end root. I want to call this. resource underscore test. So res underscore test dot txt. So you just see that I created it. Even though it did show root being underneath my home. Well, that's okay. We'll go back to my terminal. Resource resource res underscore test and it doesn't find it. Why does it not find it? It doesn't find it because when you do that we are looking at our victim machine. So we can actually do background so we exit out of our metaterpreter Let's do a cat for test.txt. Important thing to note is it's case sensitive. So all I did was I did an ls to see where I was at, see what I seen. And I remembered that I did capital RES. That's why lowercase r did not function. But here we can see. The, if we catch our rest test, we can see 
it will run ls get uid get sid and then we'll go back to our background so let's go ahead and run our resource from our meta interpreter shell sorry let's go ahead and run our resource outside of our meta interpreter shell you'll notice that we can't because what we're doing is we're running all those commands against our victim machine. So let's go back to our active session. As long as we are doing the correct spelling and capitalization, that's what we should see. Moving away from that, we have our search. And if we just do search, we don't get anything because we need to be able to look for specific files. So let's do f star dot txt. We have text files, so this star is a wild card, meaning multiple characters. So do keep that in mind. If we're looking just for a basic shell, we could just type in shell. And you notice that didn't quite work. But before, we did see that we can run files and hide them from the user. So our shell command is not really that important. All right, so another good one is upload. So we can do, let's see what our present working directory is. Okay, so we are looking at our victim machines desktop. What is our local present working directory? So that will be root. We have from our resource uh, section, we did a res test. Let's try to copy that over to our victim. So we can do upload res underscore test dot txt. I want to copy that to c colon slash windows. You know what, let's just try editing windows. Let's see if we can just copy it to C drive. And it was successful. Now let's go verify. On our Windows machine, oh, I clicked twice. On our C drive, there it is. So that way we were able to transfer code back and forth. Back to Cali. Okay, now test, test. Now let's get into some of our webcam options. So webcam, let's do list first. And that will list the webcam on our victim machine. Let's do webcam snap. This is where I've been running into problems. My snap and stream for my webcam does not seem to function. But just in case you have yours working, you can do a minus H to get additional help features. And that's actually it for our basic overview of Metaterpreter commands. I want to thank you and hope you guys have a great night.